Hello and welcome to the Wolf's Lens uh, behind the scenes video. So my name's Sean Bedker, I was the director slash VFX editor thing. I was also one of the characters, but my character sucks. So. You can just forget he exists. Yeah. I had a comment asking me how I did the VFX for the werewolf um, by this guy here. So, um, figure that'll be a part of this. Uh, annotation will be here. And the rest will just be sort of random behind the scenes -y stuff that probably won't interest anyone. Alright, well let's get right into it. So, pre-production. Um, pre-production was kind of a mess, I'm not going to deny. We were assigned to create a filler, uh, was the idea. And so we came up with the idea of a bunch of kids going, kids, adults now, going back to their primary school as a sort of reunion thing. Uh, and then a werewolf would attack them. I've had a fascination with werewolf for ages, um, as you can see by this little montage. And so, figured, werewolf, it'll be fun. And uh, that's all we had, was literally a werewolf was going to come and they would die and stuff. So that, that's nice. Along with this, I also went ahead and created some VFX tests, uh, such as this one here. Uh, just to ensure that I could actually pull off the werewolf VFX, because I hadn't done them in a while, and my previous ones weren't looking so hot. I wanted to make sure I could actually do it. Um, so that's cool. Uh, that, that was pre-production. Literally, that, that was it. <laughs> yeah. So, sometime after getting together and deciding on this idea, we realised that we'd need to meet up over the weekend to pull it off in the time frame we needed. And that two of the main cast couldn't actually be there on different days. So basically, uh, George, who was played by Will, was only able to come on Sunday, and Kevin, who I won't say the actor, because he's very he's kind of funny about that sort of stuff, online presence, which is understandable. Anyway, he was only able to come on Saturday. And so that kind of threw everything out <laughs> quite nicely, so they couldn't ever appear in the same scene. On Friday, the night before we began filming, I was quickly crapping out a script. Seriously, I was just like... And then... Cool! It's a script! Yeah, it, it was dreadful. Um, you can see it here. I mean, we basically, we stuck to it with uh, Kevin's part, which is why that part's kind of... It was mostly my script, and uh, it was also my directing. It was awful there. On Saturday, we met up with Kevin uh, here, and then we were waiting, because my sister, who uh, played... Alex. She and my mum were out, and um, they were an hour and 40 minutes late, I think, to get back to drive us down to the school. So that was great, so we were already uh, almost two hours off schedule. So we got to the school, and then we were like, well, everyone's hungry now. So then we ate for half an hour. And then we literally had an hour and a half left to film everything in. So we went by the script, we uh, filmed all those bits, and um, we skipped a bunch of me and Julia's lines. We figured we could film those later um, with ourselves. <laughs> So we just tried to film all the group shots. It was funny, because in the original script, my character was shy, and Kevin's was meant to be a jock, and Julia's was meant to be jerk as well. I think we were all kind of jerks, weren't we, from memory, except for me. Um, but I, I couldn't pull off doing shy um, at all. And Kevin couldn't pull off being a jock either, because I tried to cast us in the exact opposite roles that we normally do, and that, that turned out horribly. I, I reshot most of my lines, though. But um, anyway, so yeah, so we filmed Kevin's parts. The lighting was really good. Uh, we just had to deal with a bunch of sort of kids just running around every so often. There was this one guy who was on a scooter, and he kept going past what we were filming, and it was like, great, this is like meant to be an emotional climax scene, and now you're just going through it. Hmm. But anyway, so that turned out okay, and um, Kevin did some really good performances later on, you know, like, uh, where he's like, Shh. oh, I can't remember the exact line. Yes, but Alexandra did. I would have thought that as her brother, she would have told you! Yeah, that, that turned out really well. Me and Julia kind of were able to cheat because we refilmed some of our awful lines, which was good. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and that was, that was basically Kevin's. Um, I mean, yeah, we filmed Kevin dying, um, which used to go on a bit longer. I just, I got lazy VFX-wise. Um, and yeah, that, that was day one. Hooray! So already I had edited our part, and it was already a complete mess, uh, which is great. Partly my editing was to blame, it was dreadful. Like, I, I wasn't cutting the lines very well, like, it was sort of... There was, like, brief pauses in between, when it, it helps to be more snappy with the dialogue, I find. Like, um, I'll give an example. Compare this. <laughs> well, hi, Joe. It's so hip to be hot. What, what? But I'm cooler. It's so hip to uh... be... Ah. To this. Well, hi, Joe. It's so 
Pip to be hot. What? What? Dracula is so hip to be uh, hot. Uh, yeah, you can really feel the difference. Um, well, at least I can. Maybe I'm just dumb. So I'd edited it together, and um, then Will had come over, and I showed him that, and we were like, yeah, this isn't really going to cut it. And so we decided to also change the entire plot. So um, in the original script, the idea was that Will was going to come in later, um, and he was basically going to be a werewolf hunter. And um, he was trying to find his daughter, who had been sort of sucked into this weird cult that was trying to keep an eldritch monster at bay by sacrificing people to this werewolf. Which is kind of derivative of The Cabin in the Woods, which I really like, it's a great film. Anyway, we scrapped all that idea due to an offhand comment that um, Will made, which was, Perhaps my daughter doesn't exist, and then we're like... So from there we're able to realise, okay, maybe the wealth doesn't exist either, maybe the wealth is just some sort of weird fantasy that uh, George is playing out to sort of, you know, recreate this sort of hero moment in his mind to try and save his daughter. We came up with some really cool stuff there. And, um, yeah, so we were like, okay, we're hyped, let's go film this. And so we sort of had to reverse engineer all of Kevin's part into it, which was, you know, it turned out okay. So we got to the school, um, it was pretty early, which is good, and we were able to film lots of me and Julia's lines, and then we began filming those parts. And, uh, those went pretty well. We basically ad-libbed the entire thing from there, um, all the dialogue, uh, all the scenes, everything. Uh, a really funny scene, I thought, was, um, the part where the camera pans across to reveal the whale walking down, which I'm still not happy with, but, um, so in the original, we were going to shoot it, but then we realised we only had three people, me, Julia, and Will, and we all had to be in the shot, so it was like, how are we going to do this? <laughs> For that shot, what I did was I filmed myself against the wall, and then I filmed both Julia and Will, and I panned across. Um, however, that looked terrible, it looked like this. So, I refilmed um, later on with Julia, when I had to CG both myself and Will into the shot, and it was a complete mess, it was brilliant. And I'm still not happy with how the shot turned out, but it's not too bad, you can't really tell that the VFX is there, so... You know, turned out okay. So we began to work on some of the symbolism, like we were like, okay, well hold on, maybe, you know, why is he trying to find this non-existent daughter? Well, it was hit by a car, duh! You know, things like that. And we are trying to sort of add in the symbolism there. Uh, there was one scene later on, actually, that was meant to be longer. We would begin pestering Will about what the hell's gonna happen, how we're gonna get out of here, we're all very panicked, and I uh, would shine our flashlights in his eyes when they would turn into car headlights. And um, it was going to go into sort of this brief flashback sequence, but that didn't really pan out. Um, and that entire part was going to be longer. And, that, and that's where it kind of fell apart on um, the second day, was where we're meant to film this kind of longer sequence where it would help explain lots of the plot, however we didn't actually film it, so that kind of... That, that made everything very confusing. I tried to patch that up later, uh, which I'll get to, but it didn't really work out, because the plot's kind of a confusing mess. Hooray! So um, we got to the finale scene, Werewolf comes, uh, attacks, uh, Will talks to the werewolf, um, which I thought was a really cool scene. It turned out really well. I like it. It kind of comes out of nowhere, but it, it works really nicely, I think. And uh, I translated some Latin with Google Translate. So cool, right? Um, <laughs> so we'll talk to the werewolf. He goes into the cult room, uh, which uh, we filmed later on. Me and Joe run off while the werewolf eats him. Whoosh. You know, he saves his daughter, because um, he's a nut, basically. We were already running way over time, about an hour and a half over time. It was really late and cold. So we got home, and then we had literally 10 minutes left um, before everyone was going to get really pissed to film all the cult scenes. Well, I call them cult scenes, not really anymore, they're just sort of in his head now. But um, to film those scenes, uh, so we quickly just, um, we went into the garage that we filmed a man called Sam in, and we just dimmed the lights, added some chairs and some cool sort of props around, quickly set up some blue lighting, and that turned out nicely. And so we filmed some of his scenes there. And uh, yeah, that was basically the end of day two. And by now it was sort of coming together, but it was still a mess pacing-wise. Um, I quickly edited sort of the general idea together, where basically it would start off uh, from this point, then it would play to here, and then it would flash back to some of Kevin's stuff, and then it would flash forward again. And it was kind of a mess. Um, and so, you know, that's cool. Um, so we fixed that up a bit later. But yeah, so that was day two. Whoosh. Okay, so now we were in uh, sort of post-production, sort of. Because the problem was, we're still missing a bunch of scenes, and also the pacing was wonky, and it was a complete mess still. So I had edited it all together and on chronologically, and I worked out it was about four minutes long, um, because I'd cut lots of stuff out of Kevin's and Will's to try and make it fit better. It was going to be really short. <laughs> and so it worked a lot better when I put it back chronologically. Then it was going to be about six. Then me and Julia added our scenes, fixed up some of the other ones in it. T turned out about ten minutes long. Worked nicely. Me and Julia went back to Pinewood about four other times, I think, and it was getting really cold uh, then, so that was, you know, it was, it was freezing. <laughs> and Julia, um, it was funny, in the original um, day two, she uh, took off her jacket at one point because she was getting really warm, 
and so she had to keep her jacket off while we were filming and it was like, haha. But yeah, so we went back there and um, we managed to film uh, this part here. This entire scene was new, uh, as was this part. And we tried to film that to um, try and tie in what happened with Kevin a bit more. Because otherwise, currently it was just sort of brought up and then immediately forgotten. It didn't really work. Uh, and I also filmed all of these scenes uh, at the beginning and there and there. Um, I was playing George, basically. Um, we couldn't get Will back. And uh, it turned out okay. I did some green screen. Like I found out that if I stretched the footage slightly down, because um, Will is short, <laughs> but um, it worked nicely. Okay, so now for the VFX part. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be cool. You know, just werewolves and things like that. It's good. No, it's gonna be as boring as the other parts. Mm. So I found there were sort of four stages to the VFX. Um, first one was pre, pre, pre-production, I guess. I mean... So the first one was pre-production, which was, um, I made sure I could actually pull off the VFX for the werewolf by doing a bunch of different tests. I think I covered this earlier. And the next was to actually film the scenes. So filming the scenes, I completely botched, um, admittedly, because there's a bunch of really important rules to keep in mind when you're going to do VFX. I didn't keep any of them in mind. I broke the majority of them. It was great. So uh, the first one is to try and keep as many of the shots as still as possible. Like, um, for example, uh, this shot here or this shot, they were, they were nice, they were easy. But the thing is, when you actually have a moving shot, you have to then recreate that moving camera within the um, editing software, uh, which makes things a lot more complicated. So the second rule is if you're going to have to have moving shots, you want to have a lot of what are called high contrast uh, detection points. Well, that's what I call them. Um, so basically these are sort of edges of objects where it's really sharp color contrast or like brightness contrast, things like that. Once again, I broke this a bunch of times. Like for example this scene, it's like, whoa, there's none, or this scene, haha, <laughs> there's like one or two and the rest is lens blurs. Brilliant! And the third one is to try not have to have the CG monster or whatever interact with the environment in any way. For example, touching walls or interacting with characters, particularly moving objects makes things a lot more difficult. And sort of the fourth one, which I, um, I completely forgot about as well, actually. Um, I'm making this up as I go, so. Fourth one is, um, to tell the actors what's actually gonna happen. Go where the world's gonna be, and what it's gonna do. For example, when we were filming with Kevin, this turned out really well, because I was like, Kevin, world's gonna be biting your necks, so you wanna be like, oh, oh, oh. But then we've also got this shot with Will, where he just sort of flies there when the world eats him. And, um, while it almost works in the shot, it, it still looks kind of funny. And might I add, this shot, uh, made me laugh, because Will wasn't in there, I added the legs and the well, but, um, Obviously, I mean, I shot it all. Sorry about that unconnected tangent. Anyway, so I didn't film with any of those in mind. I was just filming. So it completely made everything really difficult. So, third stage is to actually create the werewolf. I, I kind of cheated when it came to the werewolf. I bought it off um, this uh, store online called Daz. Uh, they've got all these lots of really good 3D models. I can't stand them as a company. I find their marketing strategy kind of pathetic. But at the same time, the quality of the assets you can buy on there for the price is absolutely phenomenal. So, you know, I'd recommend them, I guess. Anyway, so I bought the whale off there from this guy, and then I imported it into um, the actual software I'll be using to do all the effects. So I use Blender, Blender 3D, which is a free and open source 3D modeling program, which is really cool. It's incredibly useful. It's great. It's really good. It doesn't crash every five minutes. Just kidding. It's pretty good for what it is. I mean, you know, it can be kind of buggy, but, you know, it's free. And if you don't have any budget, that's fantastic. You know, a couple of thousand to spend on 3DS Max or whatever, it, it's really good. So I imported the werewolf in, and I had to recreate all the textures and materials, so I did that. And um, I also added hair. This was the second time I've added hair to a werewolf, and the last time I added hair, it looked like spikes. So <laughs> I tried pretty hard. For this project, I also used um, what's called uh, the Cycles Render Engine. So basically, the Render Engine is what actually transforms all these polygons and stuff like that into an actual nice-looking image. Previously, I've used what's called Blender Internal, which looks terrible, basically. <laughs> and they've got a new Cycles render engine, which does proper light transport and things like that. It, it's really good. You'll, you'll just see, just turn it on, basically. But anyway, so now that the werewolf looks good, I had to rig it so I could animate it. Now, um, when I exported it from Daz, um, it came with a rig, but it, it was horrible. So <laughs> I deleted that and I created my own very simple rig. So basically, the idea is that the bones let you move the arms and the legs and stuff. And then I um, set up inverse kinematics, so I created a few different target boxes, so I can just drag the boxes around and the limbs follow it, instead of having to rotate them individually. Very helpful for getting really natural werewolf motion. Alright, so now let's actually create a scene. So first thing I'll do is import the uh, footage into the movie clip editor of Blender. 
Uh, I'll be doing this scene because it's fairly simple, it's not too bad. I would import it in there, I'll set the mode to tracking. So what first thing I'd have to do is I'd have to track the tracking points basically. So this is where those high contrast edges come in handy. So you want to click, create them, and then track them forward. So the next thing I'd have to do, assuming that all went well, I need at least 8, but I, I try and get at least 16. Next what I'd do is I would enter in my camera data. I use a Canon EOS 600D with a 50mm lens, and because it's not a full frame camera, I have to multiply that by 1.6. Um, I, I actually realised that kind of late, and so I had to redo some werewolf shots. I was always like, damn, this camera doesn't, this, this match is awful, right? But um, that's because it, it thinks a 50mm lens on a full frame camera, whereas my Canon is cropped, and so it's actually 80 millimeter something like that by the end of it and uh, then I'd hit the solve button and Blender would try and work out where the camera was and what it did and most of the time it worked okay sometimes I had to go in and do it manually when I couldn't get many tracking points for example this scene here there's none it's just lens flares I tried to track the flares that was dumb so yeah once I had the scene tracked I would import the werewolf set up a ground plane which could have shadows and next, I would recreate um, some of the scene geometry. Like, for example, in this shot, the werewolf jumps down, so I would recreate the roof, uh, the wall there, so I have something for the werewolf to actually interact with. And then I'd want to recreate the lighting of the scene. So um, usually I'd be able to work out like where the sun was, or um, if there was a moon, uh, that sort of lighting. You know, create a few of the lights dotted around, just to sort of get the werewolf looking within the scene, I guess. Finally, I would animate the werewolf. So this just involves, um, the first stage was called blocking, uh, which is where I set the major key poses for the werewolf on its way down. Then I would add detail paths, which is where I add lots of smaller sort of little um, idiosyncrasies, I guess. And finally, then I'll smooth out the motion. And that turned out pretty good. On, um, I think, one shot, I actually filmed myself doing the motion because I couldn't get it to look right. Uh, the shot still didn't turn out very well, but it did help. Um, so that, that's an idea. And then, yeah, so then I would render that out. I would import it into After Effects, um, the new After Effects CC, uh, which is good because it's kind of cheap. You pay monthly, but it's not too bad. I, I would prefer to buy it, personally. Like, After Effects CC 2015 is awful, though. Don't get it. Stick with 2014, trust me. I, um, I didn't realize I could downgrade like a dumbass, but um, 2015 is awful. It's got like this horrible RAM preview thing, and it's ugh. No, but like, seriously, I don't know what they were thinking. Like, um... Like the old one, you know, you hit RAM preview, it goes doop, 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 renders all frames, and then it plays them back. Really nice. Whereas the new one, it's like, oh, it's all live, and it's like, it's not live, it's laggy. It's like it's already rendered them out, but it's still laggy. It's terrible. Ugh. Anyway, so I would drag the wealth in, I'll put it into the scene, color correct it maybe, color correct the scene in general, and that was that. So, um, how'd I do actual object interaction? Well, um, for example, in the scene where it eats Layton, I would actually, I modelled a little bit of Layton, like that. And uh, then I had the werewolf actually interact with that. Or for example, where Will hit the werewolf, I actually modelled um, a cylinder which moved the same way his arm moved. So that way then I could actually have the werewolf respond, which worked pretty well. So, um, yeah, that was the VFX stage, I guess. Whoosh. Alright, so I sort of had an almost final edit in place. It was about, um, I think it was nine minutes long, I think. Um, I added a few things later on and retimed some bits, but it was mostly done. So now I began to add in music and sound effects. I found a really nice song that I like called uh, Samantha by Madness, which is a pretty cool song. Um, and I thought it really fit the scenes well, and his daughter's called Samantha, so it's like, haha, cool. Anyway, <laughs> that, that really gave a sort of nice uh, feel to the cult scenes I found. I really gotta stop calling them that. They're not cult scenes anymore. You know, funny story. Uh, in the original, when it was a cult, um, I actually wanted to have the room have red walls and sort of a greyish carpet, um, uh, which I found kind of funny because when I um, I recently watched Twin Peaks and I was like, damn, the red room looks really similar to how I imagined it, just without the zigzag um, floor. So that was kind of funny. And no backward speak, which is so cool. God damn, it's so cool. Twin Peaks is pretty good. I am looking forward to the remake. Like, like the melodramatic elements kind of get tiresome, but the... the David Lynch stuff is freaking cool. And I don't get all the hatred for Firewalk with me, I didn't think it was that bad. So it's a departure from the main series, but you know. But anyway, so I did that, and sound design wise, um, I had to create all the werewolf growls, and I used some actual dog noises that I found on the internet, um, and a bunch of the sounds I made myself as well, like breathing noises, footsteps, things like that. And so for music, um, like ambient music and stuff, I created some of it, like that final bit at the end, I made ages ago actually, but I thought it fit really nicely. 
um, or I just use the music from Incompetech or Video Copilot's wonderful trailer sound library. I forget what it's called now. And yeah, so that was sort of the sound design part of it. So um, it was almost done now. I added in some rain. I was just sort of adding lots of finishing touches, fixing up color correction issues, things like that. Yeah, so then I rendered it out. I um, created a new Electronic Mind intro for it. Chuck that up start and end, credits, and it was done! Upload to YouTube, hooray! So yeah, that was the making of the Wolf's Lens. Hopefully that wasn't um, tear-raisingly boring. Tear-raisingly? Um, but yeah, hopefully it was somewhat useful. Uh, it's mostly for me, admittedly, so I can look back at it and go, you know, I can make sure I don't make the same mistakes, I guess. Um, and yeah, cool. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully it's somewhat useful or interesting or entertaining and whatnot. Okay, see you guys later. Bye.